Now, when should you use C-Log3 and when you should use Standard Picture Profile? Let's find out. The first is into highlight recovery. Recovering highlights when you're shooting in C-Log3 is so much more better than as opposed to when you're shooting Standard Picture Profile. Here is a quick side-by-side -side comparison between shooting in C-Log3 versus shooting Standard Picture Profile. I tend to notice that in C-Log3, I can still recover the information better than I would on Standard Picture Profile. And the second biggest pro of using C-Log3 is to manage color better. Now in this example here in this video, which is shot in 8-bit, you can see that it's a point of interest here and here. The first point of interest is to look into the pinkish patches of grass in which they are very light pink and there are also presence of very heavy pink with very little gradations and gradients in between them. Now also note on the second point of this arrow where on the greenish yellowish tint, you'll notice that there are still remaining green outlines of the, uh, the grass as well. That's just starking right out. Overall, the image still looks a bit blotchy and as though there's um, imperfections of on the image. Now moving into the 10-bit color space, we can see the grass. There are very smooth gradations of the pink color. There isn't a lot of hot spots or blotchiness that's happening around. There is still some, but there isn't too much to be very noticeable as opposed to the 8-bit color depth. This is that there are more smoother color gradations where the pink meets the green meets the yellow. And my personal favorite of shooting in Slug 3 is you get to choose the difference of color spaces in which you want to work in. So if you're watching a video that's on YouTube, it is always going to be on Rec. 709. And Rec. 709 in the CIE 1931 chart shows that it only has this triangle-ish kind of information of color space. It is not a lot compared to when you look into Rec. 2020, DCI P3, and even Cinema Gamut. So in the 2D space of color information, you notice that Cinema Gamut has the biggest area of which it covers the whole spectrum. Hence, Cinema Gamut contains more color information compared to Rec 2020 and even more so than I must say on Rec 709. Whew. All right, that pretty much wraps up for the advantage of shooting C-Log3. What are the disadvantages of shooting C-Log3? The first issue that you might run against shooting C-Log3 is improper exposure. Now, when we get exposures, when we shoot in normal video formats, we would normally expose them to what our eye would see and to the back of the screen on the LED screen or LCD screen, right? Now, it is very counterintuitive for C-Log because the fact that it's a flat picture profile, you will have basically very low ability to judge if the exposure is correct or not. And on top of that, you must pay attention, in fact, very, very close attention to the histogram on your video files. The histogram on your video files will inform you if you're overexposing on your highlights or if you are pulling your graph too much to the left or to the right. And there are a couple of tools that you desperately need when you're exposing for C-Log 3. Number one is a color checker. Color checker will help your image when you're converting from C-Log3 to Rec 2020 or Rec 709. You basically need a color checker to make sure that your conversion is as close as accurate to in Rec 709 format. And the second one you need possibly is in the gray card. The gray card will expose for middle 35%, showing you that the image is properly exposed at one, two stops overexposed. And if your camera does not have tools like false color, you may need an external monitor that has false colors, which ensures that your image is properly exposed. If you notice that up to 100 to 90, that's where orange lies. And orange color is something that you just don't want to see. So try your best to expose just one stop, two stops below from the orange line. Which brings to point number three is that not all Rec. 709 looks the same. So if you convert Rec. 709 using Canon's cinema gamuts, then you notice that the look is like this, as opposed to when you go shopping online for some other uh, cinema gamut to Rec. 709, it may look different. So with this in mind, I've shared with you the advantage and disadvantage of shooting in C-Log 3 and the tools you need when you're shooting in C-Log 3. Let me know in the comment section down below if you do shoot in C-Log 3 or do you skip it altogether? Because trust me, it's gonna be difficult the moment you take your image and you put it into Premiere Pro and you don't know what you're doing. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how do you edit C-Log 3 videos, make them look a bit more Rec. 709-ish or a more finished and polished look. Stay tuned for that and thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe to the channel as I'm trying to hit a hundred subs so that I can improve on this studio space so much better. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any other questions and support this channel. There is a Pond5 link down below where I provide you stock royalty footage for my previous projects. If you want to purchase these projects to use on your personal project or on a commercial project, please feel free to license them. I get a little bit of income out of that. If not, again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the C-Log 3 editing video in Premiere Pro.